venerable religious and dear parishioners, during the Great Depression, President Roosevelt uttered something over his fireside chat radio address that was very helpful to people. And he said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And it was a very difficult time in America's history, tremendous economic difficulty, the Great Depression. Upwards of 25% people were unemployed. Uh, People were in real danger of starving or not getting other necessities of life. And so that was something that was a motivation But I want to give you something regarding the word fear when it comes to sin. And there is something that we should fear besides fear. St. Alphonsus Liguri said, the one thing we need to fear is sin. And this is something we read in virtually all the writings of the saints on the supernatural level, of course, President Roosevelt was talking about the natural level, but on the supernatural level, the one thing we must fear is sin. And today I would like to reflect upon the evil of sin. It's why we're doing penance, is it not, during Lent, to make up for our past sins and to strengthen ourselves against sin in the future by giving up, denying ourselves lawful pleasure. Yes, Jesus took the cost of sin upon himself in his passion and death, but that doesn't mean we get off scot-free and don't have to do anything. Nothing could be further from the truth. So let us reflect on the evil of sin. Why is it that we need to do penance? What's so bad about sin? Let's listen to more of the words of St. Alphonsus Liguri. This is from chapter 15 of his excellent book, Preparation for Death, and he titles it, The Malice of Mortal Sin. What does the sinner do when he commits mortal sin? He insults God. He dishonors him, he afflicts him. In the first place, mortal sin is an insult offered to God. The malice of an insult is, as St. Thomas says, estimated from the condition of the person who receives and of the person who offers the insult. It is sinful to offend a peasant. It is more criminal to insult a nobleman. But to treat a monarch with contempt and insolence is a still greater crime. But then who is God? He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, as we read in the Apocalypse, chapter 17. He is a being of infinite majesty before whom all the princes of the earth and all the saints and angels are less than an atom of sand, as a drop in a bucket, as a little dust. The prophet O.C. adds that compared with the greatness of God, all creatures are as insignificant as if they did not exist. All nations, he said, are before him as if they had no being at all. Such is God, and what is man? He is, according to St. Bernard, a heap of worms, the food of worms, by which he shall soon be devoured. And this miserable worm, Voluntary, voluntarily insults God. Vile dust dares to provoke such tremendous majesty. The angelic doctor, St. Thomas, had just reason to say that the sin of man contains, as it were, an infinite malice. And St. Augustine calls sin an infinite evil. Hence were all men and angels to offer themselves to death and annihilation. Such an offering would not satisfy for a single sin. 
God punishes sin with the pains of hell, but all theologians teach that this chastisement is less than sin deserves. When a man sins, what does he do? He says to God, Lord, I will not serve thee. Man answer, says to God, I will have revenge. I will take possession of that property. I will indulge in that forbidden pleasure. Like Pharaoh, when Moses on the part of God commanded him to allow the people to go into the desert, the sinner answers, who is the Lord that I should hear his voice and let Israel go? The sinner says the same, Lord, I know thee not. I will do what I please. In a word, he insults the Lord to his face and turns his back upon him. Mortal sin is precisely a turning away from God. In committing sin, man dares to declare himself the enemy of God and to contend single-handed with the Lord. What would you say if you saw an insect attack an armed soldier? God is the omnipotent being who by a nod has created heaven and earth out of nothing, and if he wishes, he can by another act of his will destroy all creatures. And yet, in consenting to sin, the sinner stretches out his arms against the Lord. What an insult, what temerity, what blindness. So there you have it, one of the greatest teachers, the doctors in the church explaining to us sin is a very, very bad thing. And we can also know from the teachings of the church that it doesn't take hundreds and thousands of mortal sins to go to hell for all eternity. It takes only one. And then to look at it from the Point, viewpoint of love, how bad is sin? Look at the scourged body of Jesus. Look at him thorn crowned. Look at him carrying his cross. Look at him nailed to the cross and dying on it. That's how bad sin is. If only we could weep over our sins and the sins of others. I remember reading a story about St. John Marie Vianney as he's hearing confessions and somebody is rattling on a, off a long list of sins. And this person is, begins to hear St. John Marie Vianney cry in the confessional. He's, he's sobbing. And he, he asks him through the grate, says, Father, what's the matter? Are you all right? And the answer he got is, I weep because you do not weep over your sins. In other words, he was conveying to this sinner, he was, yes, he was reciting his sins, but in, almost in a calloused way, he didn't he, he didn't understand the evil of sin. And through the tears of St. John Marie Vianney, he began to understand a little more the evil of sin. So this is what Lent is about. This is why we are fasting. This is why we're doing penance. And yes, we should reach a greater level of sensitivity and awareness about the evil of sin. How should we deal with sin? Our Lord gives us such a wonderful example in today's gospel of how to deal with temptation. If I can remind you, there are three steps to sin, three steps to giving in to temptation. And we see all, th we see the steps, well, the devil will first of all suggest a sin. And we see him offer those three suggestions to our Lord 
in today's gospel, the suggestion to gluttony or indulgence, self, you know, sensuality. That's the first suggestion. The second suggestion is towards, um, towards pride, you know, throw yourself off this pinnacle and have the angels catch you. And then the third suggestion is, I'll give you all of these material things. Just bow down and worship me. And our Lord teaches us to resist temptation at the very onset, at the suggestion. Because even he endured that first step of temptation. That's as far as it could ever go because he's almighty God. He's all pure, all holy, all perfect. But Jesus is still teaching us a lesson. So what are the other two steps? The second step is pleasure. You start to enjoy this thought, this inclination. You're always in great danger at the second step. And finally, the third step is consent. That's where you say, I know I shouldn't do this, doing it anyway then the sin is complete. The consent has been given. So our, so our Lord, again, as I said, teaches us such a powerful lesson. Resist temptation at the onset. As soon as the suggestion is there, deal with it, overcome it, turn away from it. And it's so much easier at that level to deal with it than when, if you start letting it get to the second step, starting to feel the temptation. You're toying with temptation. Don't toy with it. Get rid of it at the first step. Again, we'll be imitating our Lord. So let us, let us pray for a sensitivity, not for a scrupulous conscience, but for a tender conscience that doesn't want to offend God even in a little way. Remember, mortal sin is what crucified Jesus, literally killed him. But all of our venial sins, they were the stripes, the blows, the spitting. Let's never say, oh, it's just a venial sin. No. Venial sin is evil too. Let us love this good God who laid down his life for us. We can never thank him. Thank our blessed mother, the mother of sorrows, for what they are willing to do to, to suffer so much so that we would have that chance to get to heaven one day. Have a blessed Lenten season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.